Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated and you join me as I return to the conquest of Ireland in Thrones of Britannia. It's been going slow of recent because, like I said on one of my previous videos, I was working on a large project and that was Ireland in Cyberpunk, which I got out there in the last week. So that has taken a lot of time and a lot of effort over the last while. And... Yeah, now that that is finished, I can get back to hopefully finishing off this series. I don't think we have a huge amount of work left to do. We have a march on Ordvaka. So our forces are not too far from there. Fuha will probably march up in that direction. If Flanchina doesn't get there first, he's way up heading for the Grianon of Alloc, which is the other major target that we have. And the reason that I'm concentrating to start with on Fuha is because he has quite a lot of individuals that he can promote. Now we are... We do need money for these very expensive buildings that I need to get up to level 5. But you know what? We'll actually click the proper button. We'll promote this man. And we will promote this man and I think so considering these guys have some armor uh, so it's not um, promotions but it's uh, it's upgrades we could retrain them as mailed Fina oh that's 150 go on We actually have a couple of upgrades that we can give them. So this guy now is upgraded. He's got silver weapons. And he's a male Fina. And we'll upgrade one of the Kerns as well. I'm not going to put too much time and effort and money into upgrading them. Our total income has actually decreased a bit because we now have some mailed Fina. But that'll still get us up over... That'll get us back to 5,500 at the start of the next turn. So this is where I pretty much left it the last time. So Fuha has made up all of his moves. Here is Flanchina heading for the Green on of Alloc. Here is Ogre heading for Ordthroha. And then Dunica is way over here by Dublin. He watching, just keeping an eye on things because the main Dublin army is actually here at Kelmore. So Fuha is going to interact with them in the summer of 902. So we're being told that a faction has been destroyed somewhere. We have successful propaganda. Tuhl has become a producer. And look at this. Canonus has fallen to a very small Viking army. That is indeed their main army. But this one has suddenly appeared out of somewhere and has started heading up towards uh, to try and uh, meet up with them. So what we're going to have to probably do, he's blocked, he's heavily blocked by the forces there. Is this a line of, was he going in some direction? No. I thought this was this was his line of march, but it's not. It's it's the borders of the kingdom. I don't know why it looks so unusual. I haven't spent much time up here in a very long time. We can't move him very far. I'm not interested in taking any of these regions. I have a feeling that these guys, the giant slayers, our allies, are going to start taking regions around here. So I'm going to move him. We're going to need to move. Are we going to need to move him? Okay, we'll leave his movement until the end. we we'll leave his movement until the end. We'll start with what we know what we're doing. We will not fail you. Flanchina, march on the Green on of Alloc. So he's going to need some battering rams. He's going to need some stuff. We'll give him... We'll give him three of these. and That'll keep him happy. Show no mercy! Now, if we move down here, we have... Ogre. 
marching on Orlthroha. So we will occupy. And that puts us just outside Clotter. I will probably have to leave him here to, to regain some... Some troops. I think I recruited him from Dunanaul and just shoved him out in this direction. And uh, potentially he's going to become a ruler of here, maybe? I'm not actually too sure where he's going to be put in charge of. So I was saying what I was going to do was have Fuha march on Kelmur. What he's going to have to do instead is take a detour. Probably a substantial detour for a while. In against the Ravens. Who have taken Kyanonus. We outnumber them more than 2 to 1. And we have substantially better trained units. I would generally fight this. But you know what? We'll give it an owl skip. Where is? Auto resolve. And we'll use balance tactics. Oh Jesus. Oh. Christ through the eye. Mother of God. So some hefty losses. Some hefty losses, it has to be said. We will occupy. My reputation is growing. We'd get into trouble if we went um, burning cannonists to the ground at this stage, I'd say. It's telling us we have some damaged buildings in here. So we will repair the Kayla Day Abbey and we will repair the pasture. Now, I was thinking of taking that force and marching them out. Well, I can't, actually, can I? Our every foe shall fall. Can't march them out against these guys just yet. Now, they are in our territory, so they have stopped recruiting. I'm wondering what they're going to do. Head for Clunord? Oh, Lord, if they do, what a roundabout rigmarole of a journey that's going to be. So... I'm going to have to bring Dunica to the outskirts of Clunord, as close as we can get him, to to basically prep to take this place. This is this is one of I again. This is a part of the game that I've I've complained about quite a lot. Is this this constant kind of needing to go back and forth? This this scenario has been made massively more convoluted than it needs to be because we can't reinforce any of these regions so I'm thinking that that's the uh, the direction that he's going to go and he might he might try and attack Kyanonis I'm not too sure is this the new king I don't know maybe who knows now it is showing that he's not in a position to attack Clonord so he could very well come in against the troops here but uh, he could threaten that region anyway he might fall back that's pretty much his only immediate abilities. So, like, it would, it made a very little sense there for their ruler to go from Kelmur to Kyanonis instead if he had skirted around in this direction and met up with these guys. That would have put him in a much better, much stronger position. I think we've done everything that we can do. We have some skills available for Fuha. He has champions out the wazoo. We'll give him a quartermaster for the old bit of marching. And considering that they look like they took a bit of a baiting in the last battle, we'll upgrade these guys. We won't we won't go promoting them just yet. We'll keep the, the bit of the money coming in. And I think that is as much as we can do for the summer of 902. We are sieging the Green on the Valach. We are... We've taken this place. And are contemplating what to do next. I don't know if I want to march them to Orthroha. I had them as a kind of a... Not a defensive army. I, I don't know what way you'd put it. Uh, to basically mop up armies that were causing trouble. So I might I might keep them in that task. And uh, yeah. Fuha is down here. He's going to have to move in against these guys maybe on the next turn. We'll see what they do. Do you know what I bet they're going to do? They're going to start raiding. Let's see... Let's see if they start raiding.
Right, they didn't start raiding. They didn't start raiding. Monia has become influential. Tohal is more than enough. They withdrew. They withdrew back to Dublin. Which leaves them in a line to head for Glendalock. Where have... These guys have come ashore up here. I'm hoping they're heading for Linz. Our major problem at the moment is that Ord Moor has fallen. I mustn't have controlled this because I'm not being told about it. I've no idea where down around this area. I actually thought it was the place adjoining Ross Alahar that had fallen. That would have been problematic. That would have been problematic if there was rebels wandering around in this direction. Uh, Flanchina is besieging the Green on of Alok. Oh no! We'll get up to we'll get up to that in a moment. He and Ross Alahar, we have finished the Abbey School of Ross, a communal abode for both the expounders and receivers of sacrosanct knowledge. Look at them all, they're delighted receiving all that knowledge. And a bit of research. Okay, we might as well actually start with the research first of all. So I think that was bodyguards and companions, the royal armor that we just picked up. Trained companions plus 10 melee skill for the commander's unit. Minus two turns until replenishment for spear infantry. One unit food upkeep. Plus 15% range for missile infantry. Do you know what? Do you know what? That wouldn't be too shabby. We might go for that. I think, yeah, we'll stick with the missile units. I don't think we're going to be going back in this direction. Unless we... Need food? Unless we need food. We seem to be A-OK -okay for food at the moment. Right, where is Ross Alaher? So here it is, the final upgrade. Uh, 7,000 is going to take 12 turns. So we can potentially do that at the start of the next turn. And then it'll be 12 turns before we get the monastic school and two of the five buildings elevated to level five. Hell's bells, that's gonna that's gonna take some effort. I'm trying to think, what are we gonna do with Dunica? Poor old Dunica, I think I'm gonna plop him there. Heading for glory. Uh, that's maybe not a great place. If this army heads for Clunor, he should be able to respond. If it starts to try and push down into Glendalock, he should be able to respond. That's what I'm thinking. And I also believe that from where they are now, they're not going to be in a position to push on Kelmur. But if we take Kelmur and stay there, or continue on from there, then they will take Canonus again. So this entire this entire army is just being held up at Canonus. We'll take this. And on the next turn, we'll send him back. And so Flanchina prepares to take the Grilon of Alach. The headquarters. Kind of. Of the northern Enail. Go full out, that's it. Well said. Historically, or the belief is that basically the Enail would have pushed out of Connacht, one branch heading northwards, and either another branch heading eastwards into Meath, or the northern branch kind of splitting and pushing down into Meath. So the Enail sweep across the province, from the west. Uh, Alok kind of becoming the early headquarters. They continue to push out. So then Alok becomes the, the heartland of the Kinnel Cunnel. And the Kinnel Owen. Uh, push out into the lands that become Tyr Owen. 
And then what happens from there is that eventually uh, the they rotate power in this region back and forth between themselves, between the Kinnel Kunnel and the Kinnel Own. And the, the title, the kind of the over-kingship of the northern Enail is known effectively as the King of Alloch after this very important location. However, it is the Kennel Owen that will eventually monopolize power. So, A. Finlia, that we would have seen at the very start of this series, uh, ruling this region, he was one of the, the, the Kennel Owen. But the region was still kind of known as Alloch in reference to this region here, which was under the control of the demoted Kennel Connell. And it was the same then down here in the uh, in the lands of the southern Enail. You had the Shield Edo Sloynia and Clan Coleman, who Flanchina is a member of. And when the Kennel Owen monopolized power in the north and Clan Coleman in the south, then they began rotating a title between themselves. The King of Tara, which was had just been kind of this region up until then, uh, and that's often conflated with the High Kingship, and Flanchina uh, makes a, a big drive to try and effectively establish the High Kingship and to establish the uh, the title King of Tara as the High Kingship and to retain it and to maintain it. We don't know a huge lot about the Grianon itself, the, the fort. Uh, it's destroyed, effectively, in the late 10, in the early 1100s, by Merkartuk Uvrian, that would be Brian Brew's great-grandson, uh, Thorluk's son, in revenge for the uh, northern Enail, uh, Donal Ulachlan. Uh, they very briefly held the High Kingship, and he went down into Munster and destroyed Kinkora. So they very briefly held the High Kingship between Thorluk and Merkartuk. So Merkartuk gets revenge and destroys it. And it's kind of rebuilt. The um, the Grianon as it exists today was rebuilt in the late 1800s, I think. So we don't know a huge, a huge amount about it. But it's, it's a big old... It's a big old thing hanging around there. And Flanchin is going to go in. He's going to hammer on the door of it. And see what they have to say to him. And so here we are, on the battlefield, as once again, Flanchina wages war in the shadow of the Rock of Cashel. Wait, what? So I was I was interested to see what um, what the Green on of Alec was going to look like, and yeah, it looks suspiciously, it looks suspiciously like the the Rock of Cashel. I wonder if, because the green on appears on the kind of the, the 3D model of Alec. I wonder if there's a building here. A well that is basically the green on. No. Well, there you go. Maybe that's it. That's there. That's the green on of Alec. There you go. That's what we're fighting for. That's what we're fighting for. I've done the same old, same old. I've split everyone up in mad owl positions. I don't even know where they all are at this stage. I don't even know who has the towers at this stage. So we'll bring these guys in. This might be a tough one. That might be a tough position. And that's actually the position that has the... The door. So this could be the position that we might be able to push through. I have three forces here. I only have about two here beside the door. And then way over in this corner is actually where I have everyone, pretty much. I have the Javeliners, so they might they might help. Probably not, though. And we're fighting in the fog. So that might diminish their archer accuracy a bit, maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. So the archers are beginning to pelt at our positions. And it looks like they've completely withdrawn from here. Fantastic. Nobody is for a Barney. So they're going to have a tough job. 
pushing through here. Whereas here shouldn't be as bad. But this is definitely going to be the... The easiest place, considering there is nobody here. So it's just going to be a matter of rushing them all in. So down comes the bridge, in go the troops. We'll throw those guys in and get them to take down this tower. And see about getting some more of the troops in. Oh, the devils. Have they... Oh, they've managed to put that thing... We lost our siege engine. Well, no, that is going to be a bit of a problem. So it's not going to go as smoothly as I expected. Oh, they're bringing everybody across to here. This will be a tough battle. Okay, the enemy tower has been destroyed. That only took all day. That only took all day. We'll get these forces ready. I could just march them into the uh, the center, but we'll try and bring them across to, uh, to attack who's coming towards us. We have our men fighting bravely, and we have these guys throwing arrows at them. We're going to have to try and bring Flanchen in to rally some troops. Do you know what? They, they actually just rallied themselves. Fair play to them. They're breaking heavily. I'm not too sure what from. Maybe just the uh, the the sheer might of our men. So I don't know. Is it just the uh, the the sheer weight of numbers coming in against them that's terrifying them, or uh, or what? We as might as well concentrate on breaking these. Well, then again, they have a lot of archers. That's predominantly. They have a lot of archers. Says he, hovering over spearmen. Okay, they've, they've broken. Praise God! The Rock of Aloch is in our hands. Two hundred and eighty-four kills by one of the units. Then again, that's another thing. I mean, these were all brand new units by Aloch. Two of them had bronze chevrons, whereas three bronze chevrons is the worst of any of the units that we had. And we have a chunk of them on um, silver chevrons. It's actually gas that we don't have any on gold chevrons, considering this is the main the main army led by Flangina. And so here, the forces utterly decimated. They lost, I think, about 450 in the battle. We didn't come off too badly. A decisive victory. We could liberate it, but we need it for the Green On of Alloc. We need to add more stones to it. We need to add more stones to the Green On of Alloc. Let's take a look at it. Oh, hell's bells. Oh, how many years is this going to take? First thing we have to do is repair the damn thing. What is this? A granary? And church crafts. And of course, yes, the grand the grand cloth market of Dunanaul. And the overseas market. Oh boys. What can it be converted to? Beach merchant. And what's that? Carpets? Tony Gold, famous for its carpets. We can also have a grand cloth market uh, somewhere else up here. Right. Well, there you go. There is the green on of Alloc has fallen. It has been lost. The Enail have lost control of the green on, and now it is controlled by the Enail. That's not too bad. And we have governance available. I'm probably just going to put this lead.
in charge. We'll see. We'll see what we can. We'll see what we can get up here. If there's anybody better. The short answer is no. So where is he gone to? Seriously, where has he gone to? Oh god, I have to go through all this whole process of retiring him. His loyalty is good and I gave him a scribe for this very purpose. So what do we do? It's, it's this, isn't it? Replace General? Who are we going to put there instead of him? See, I don't know if Ardgar is actually... He's, he's a... Is Ardgar who I think he is? Ardgar, are you who I think you are? I vaguely remember marrying him to Dovesa. It's our son, it's Ardgar. Is he doing anything? Do I know? Can I tell? Okay, so it's giving their locations. Ardgar doesn't have a location. There you go, Ardgar, you can be in charge. That's fantastic. Yeah, sure, you can be in charge of Alec. I have no idea if he's a, of any actual use. Uh, I think he has some traits. He's a negotiator. Plus ten percent income. Oh boys, there's going to be there's going to be carpet salt in Donegal. There's going to be carpet salt in Donegal by this man. I wonder what's the Irish for silver surfer because that's the the job that Ogre is going to be taking up. He's going to march ahead of Flanchina to announce his arrival. We're going to have him move. If I put him there. Yeah, we'll put him, we'll put him there. So he'll still get some couple of troops. And hopefully he's going to be able to take Clahar. Do you know what? It doesn't make much of a difference. But uh, Flanchina is going to march for Orthvaka. I'm not too sure where the capital of these guys is because we could be seeing we could be seeing their forces come from anywhere Iona has fallen to Scottish rebels you devils you no idea what's going on up that end of the country that doesn't I have no idea what that, that symbol even is so yeah I have no idea where their forces are going to come from that's the only, that's the only major issue, but we'll get Ogre into Clahar. You can have Ordvaka. Seems like I gave my son the green on of Alok. You can have Ordvaka. And unless, oh boys, unless these devils take it first, yeah, we, we'd want to march and march quickly. I think that's all that we can do. We're going to be watching what happens here in Dublin. Hoping that they don't march south for Glendalock, hoping that maybe these Vikings, our allies, can distract them and cause them to head northwards. We're heading into the winter. Consider the benefits of friendship, if you will. Who the hell are you people? Cornwall? Declaration of Friends. Do you have any hot daughters? My batshit crazy son is single. He's single and he's in Dublin. Yeah, let's be friends with Cornwall. Why not? It has been a pleasure. It has. And so as the ground turns white, the sky turns dark, we are told that God has blessed the fields with great fertility. Our farmers are reporting a great harvest. So for the year ahead, we're going to have a great, a great harvest. Fantastic. Keen on fishing. There you go. Good man. Kill them all. That's, yeah. 
all those damn fish killed a lot of them. The thing that's of interest is that, yeah, so we're, we have this back and forth, back and forth. We have the, me and Dublin, we like to play this little back and forth game. It's so much fun. They're gonna leave Dublin and take Canonis or Kelmour. Then we slaughter them all. Then they just raise another army and do it all over again with no major consequences. Where can you go to? We'll bring you to there. That's the thing is we've no we've no good bridge here is the kind of the major issue. Can you get to Yeah, we can bring him back to Kenness. Ready for action. Boys oh boys, they're not looking great. They're not looking great. So they're not. Yeah, you boys, you boys are in a bad old position now. Well, god damn and blast the lot of ye to hell. Unfaithful. Minus one influence to husband, minus one zeal to husband, minus one loyalty to husband. This one is an adulterer. Her husband may not be aware but her dalliances are common knowledge among the people. If this was CK3, they would be paying me to take this woman off their hands. Current proposal insulting. To marry Dunica. God damn the lottie to hell. Right then, we now have an opportunity to actually take a look at some of the buildings here in Alloch. So, church workshop. Church income. Big chunk of church income. That's how we make our money. Eight turns to go up to the Royal Hall of Alloch. What does it actually tell us about this thing? So, there you go. It's telling us there at the end that... Um, an older hill fort was one of just five Irish sites on Ptolemy's map of the world. And so that would be, what's that, the second century? So we're not entirely too sure when the Enail kind of began to emerge in Ulster. But at the time of St. Patrick, the Ulla, I'm oh sure they're gone now at this stage, but the Ulla who would have been here, they would have controlled Ardvaka, and they would have controlled much of the province. And if you go back even further, then to, we'll say, something like Thoinbo Holina, which is supposed to be about, well, people think it's maybe about, uh, written about the first century, or that it uh, retells events from the first century, it looks like the Ulla control the entire province, and actually um, kind of down to, to nearly here, that they have extensive territory, and that this is basically whittled away, whittled away, whittled away. By the time that Ireland emerges from the Dark Ages and we kind of begin to get constant knowledge of what Ireland is like in the 6th and 7th centuries, the even later, uh, the Enail are pretty well established in the, the province, but they're kind of uh, emerging in that time period. So the fact that there was an important site there prior to the Enail would again indicate the uh, the importance of Alloc over hundreds of years, if not longer, before the Enail came to power. Anyway. Right. The men are eager to get to it. They're eager, all right, the devils. So we could... Yeah, we as might as well start on Ross Alher because... Where's that gun to... Oh, you can hear the excitement in my voice. We'll start with this. Right, because that's going to be 12 turns. And in two turns time, then we can start on... We'll get the money together that'll allow us to start on... The Grianon. Right. Silver Surfer, go way in there into Clahar. Our bravery is legendary. All right. There we go. The man himself... Will... Oh, Jesus. Is he going to be... Oh, lads. 
it's going to, you see, if we, if we don't start moving, it's going to be another one, two turns, three turns, probably, before we can actually attack Ordvaka, and potentially look at, uh, looking at bringing this big, long series of wars to an end. I think. Right. Where does this actually control? Clone Leash. Clahar is under our control. Yeah, so if we can just clone Leash and Ardvaka, that's literally it. And then I am prepared to uh, to bring all these wars to an end. We will bring the winter of 902 to an end. We haven't finished our technology. We will bring 902 to an end. Well, 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 look at this. The silly devil. Do you know what? I'm gonna fight it. The king, he is a sizable personal retinue. I wonder is that... Uh, foot soldiers, as opposed to an actual... horseback bodyguard. So the king of Dublin, he's headed for Canonus. My god, the amount of bodies buried at Kells at this stage. Dear God, is this not the flattest land you've ever seen? Good farming land. Not great fighting land. We could have maybe tried to put some people up there. I, I'm beginning to think that this might have been an elevated... Uh, yeah, sure, elevated, yeah. I basically just picked some flat ground. Let them march forward. You're the ones that attack me, so you're the ones that are going to have to march. Okay, good. Kill them all. That's it. So as we are just planted here, waiting for them, I have my... Shield Castle. Activated on all of the infantry troops. Because so I imagine that we're going to be seeing some arrows coming in shortly. Actually, they only have pretty much one unit with a good range. All the rest of them have the same range as my javelin ears, so they'll have to send them in close. Are they beginning a charge with the... Oh, I think they're beginning a general charge, are they? Let's get to it. It's a charge. it is a charge. This will be interesting. Oh boys, they're in they're in wedge formation. Never mind. So we'll see if we can. We'll see what we can do. It's the, these guys keeping watch on the flanks are. Uh, uh, there they go. No, they were just about to. They were just about to charge my Kern spearmen, which I would love if they would. So we can hopefully get the king in from the side. Here are our javelineers. And um, their troops there are in a good chunk of damage. Or in a good chunk of danger. Uh, I think we will pretty much start bringing these in and have these guys charge the rear. Now this is the problem. They are going to concentrate on our king. Or not our king, but on our general. They have four horsemen. They have some marauders in there. At this stage, it's actually getting difficult to to find something that we can charge. So I'm trying to get these guys into a position where they can come in here and cause some damage. I'm trying to hit these javelin men as well. Oh, just missed them. So 
or mailed Fina. They might be able to get in against these Raiders. Oh, they're, they're, um... They're ranged, so they're going to be causing trouble. Uh, enemy general is dead. These guys are just standing here doing nothing. We'll bring these guys back, not to they be killing troops that they shouldn't be killing. Did we hit their riders? We did. So they'd be the kind of ones that'd be causing most trouble. We're not going to be able to wipe out enough that uh, that it's going to be a complete. Annihilation, so we're going to be hunting down troops over the, the coming days. But then again, this is Dublin's main army, so I suppose it's going to fall back on Dublin. Don't really care if they can stay there. So here, their axemen are surrounded. I was actually thinking, when would we be able to get this area cleared and send them across to help our current spearmen? Never mind. Never mind. So we'll take out these spearmen. Then we'll head for the Great Axes. Yeah, it's fine. We'll head for the Great Axes. How is everything going on over here? Uh, we have as much damage done as we can do, I'd say. So just a bit of a clean up. So there's a fire down, so there's there's somebody somebody is inside looking out the window, looking out at this. Just lads being mowed down in the backyard. They're gonna have to go out, they're gonna have to oh we're just leaving all these dead bodies for somebody. Imagine that, you're just inside. Or oh, even worse, they've no windows at the back of the house. You're just inside, you big a big potish buds boiling. And you come out and there's a place, the whole field is just covered in dead bodies. We're overrunning down. Cut down. You were just on the way out to the jacks. You're inside in the jacks. There's all these lads jumping and running past you. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to destroy this person's backyard. <laughs> we've left all these dead bodies, I'm just trying to destroy their backyard. I'm not even trying to win the battle anymore. Wait, there's a battle? I think we've enough damage done. So it'll be interesting to see how many of those kills were done. Afterwards, I don't think all that many. That's some pretty hefty losses. That is some pretty hefty losses. And another King of Dublin dead. So we killed him, we killed their, their king, and he very quickly took off his hat. Do you need... Yeah, sure, we might as well take on warriors, like... Which might as well. So off he goes. So there's a heap of people with promotions. We have a decisive victory. The palace of Kashal has been built. Where does that put us? Oh god. Another level 5 needed here as well. 6 grand. I think that does make buildings cheaper, does it? No, I thought it did. Maybe it was the level 4. Oh no, it was it was um it was actually Ross Allard that did something. Uh, I thought this was actually at level 5, so I don't think we've any buildings at level Oh no, we have we have um we have the thing here in Clamac Noise at level 5. The Monastery of St. Chiron. So that's the first one at level 5. We need 6 grand to get that one up to level 5. We need another turn. And we can start expanding in Aloch. Ross Alher is about 11 turns away. There we go. Professional archers. We have Kashal, and we have a decisive victory at Kyananus. 15% enemy, or 15% unit replenishment. Increased campaign movement. You know what? That might actually be useful. 
upkeep for all units. Income in all regions goes down. Uh, no thanks. But yeah, pushing to there mightn't be the worst idea. We do have a lot of food at the moment. So where do we start? We as might as well take the man here and shove him on for Ardvaka. The problem is we are talking about an 18 stack. Probably heading for the Green on the Valach. So if I start rushing you back, if they do land and make it to the Green on, uh, what are our defenses like? Do we have any troops here? Yeah. Not too sure if we have enough to resist an army of that size, but uh, yeah, if we can take our vodka, if we can take our the vodka, then we mightn't have to worry about this. None shall stand against us. Thunica will come up, and hopefully. For glory. Not exactly what I wanted. Not retreat. Auto resolve. We have 3,000 troops coming in against their 120. <laughs> we should do fine. Fight aggressively. He turned into a ghost before he even died. Faded away. Do you know what? Yeah. 95 quid. Nicely done. Can I bring him back in any direction? And for her. Oh, he has a bit of a... He has a bit of a distance to go. Now that I've withdrawn this army here, we'll have to get for her to push up towards Clonish. But yeah, we're quite close to taking all the territory that we will ever need. Is this the new Dublin? No, this is this is a different guy. If he starts to push south, if he gets an army together and starts to push south, not too sure what type of a position that'll put us in. Unless these guys march out for or the vodka. They actually can't reach it on the next turn. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, they might head south for north. My god, somebody actually wants to, to marry my poor son. She has boxes. Plus five supplies when her husband is commanding. Do you know what? Go on. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Whatever. Now, what what do we have here? Oh, they did indeed. Look at this. They, they've taken north. Fair play to them. Fair play to them. Surely... The King of Dublin has done something sensible. He's parked himself in Dublin to defend against the armies heading down again. No, he hasn't. He has headed for Glendalough. Am I in a position? To raise an army here. Muster. Archer. Sure. 500 because I just could not be bothered I could not be bothered having to try and deal with defending this region or trying to trying to get an army down here the pure pain and misery of trying to march an army down here to deal with this mess recruit a unit are you an archer you are sure that means you're cheap. Er. And you. Because I just could not be bothered trying to get Thunica all the ways down there. And that's the annoying thing is... Trying to get the money together for these big buildings. And trying to then get these small armies, these small mobile armies together. It's just, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, are we going to be able to get this guy into the Green on the Valach before these guys visit 
And hopefully we're going to be in a position to bring this man across and have him begin the Siege of Ordvaka. Now, we ran into a spot of bother the last time. Do you know what? It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Maintain the siege. And are we in a position, slash should we, if this place is about to come under attack... What's well, eight turns do I want to hold off until... Because if they take the place and then damage the green on... Yeah, we'd better hold back. There's nothing I can do in Kashal, is there? No, that's going to be... That's We need double the amount of money that we have at the moment. That is everything, I think, that I can do for this turn. We are eager for glory. Into battle. My god. Uh, trying to get across there, and um, that should be it for the summer of 903. So we're getting some people given out. We're going to crack the whip at somebody. Cahlon, somebody of noble birth, has been born. To our daughter, Gormla, if I am correct. We've developed healthcare. We've besieged Ordvaka. We can see that our allies continue to push into this region. The Dublin forces remembered, oh yeah, we have a settlement at home that we could have been using instead of going off in this direction. So they've turned around and they've gone back up here. The most interesting development, I think, is that these guys, they came ashore, I suppose, on their own territory. If they'd come ashore here, they could have actually laid siege before I got my forces into the Grianon. I don't know if I need to recruit anybody. We don't have archers to throw spits at their towers. War dogs. Let's recruit war dogs. Oh no, we probably do have archers. Who would we recruit? Do I care? Do we need anyone? You can never go wrong with some Kern Spearmen and you. The men are eager to get to it. Now, we will take the leash. We have skills available. Amoli is a governor. Do you know what? This one would have been handy. This one would have been handy. And it might come in helpful if we have to keep marching around the place like lunatics. Now, here it is, potentially the last great battle that we will ever fight. Because my intention is to offer peace immediately after this. Flanchina stands outside Ordvaka. There it is. So this is where St. Patrick built his monastery. And, well, it's one of a number that he built. And its prominence grows in the years after his death. The... I won't say he kind of goes into... abeyance or anything like that. But it, it's known that Patrick is important. But then this cult of Patrick begins to emerge in the 6th century. And over the next couple of hundred, couple of thousand years. Uh, there'll be many stories told about him and his importance will be greatly, greatly, greatly promoted. Especially by the Enail, who, as they control this region and they have control of one of the churches that he founded, uh, they will seek to promote him as the national saint and to promote Armagh, or Dvaka, as the Rome of Ireland. Now, the major problem, of course, is that they don't have his body. Which 
uh, as one of the beliefs is that as the Enail swept into this region and drove the Ulla um, eastwards, that St. Patrick went into exile with them and uh, basically or was pushed in this direction with them and is buried at either... Uh, there's a couple of different locations. Down Patrick is one of the areas that he's believed or that there are rumours that he has believed in, but um, a lot of the stories have been muddied over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Later on, the Normans will attempt to lay claim to the legacy and to the legends of Patrick, and it's something that I'm actually going to look at in an episode on the channel at a later point in time. But for now, we're going to try and take Ardvaka. Hopefully, hopefully, lads, stop. Stop with the fire. In the early 800s, so what are we into now? 903, so a little under 100 years ago, a scribe set about the creation of the Book of Armagh. And it's believed that one of the things that they copied was the first draft of St. Patrick's Confession, the Confessio, which would be one of the, the famous works that he wrote. He didn't write all that many, but uh, it's an account of his life. And the copy of the Confessio that's in the Book of Armagh is bizarre, because it's a lot shorter than a lot of the later copies that you see. And the theory is that they actually transcribed it, like I said, from a first draft. So Patrick sat down, wrote the first draft of the Confessio, showed it to people, and they said, this is terrible. It needs to be longer. And he sat down and he made a longer version but that in the early 800s that Armagh still possessed the actual handwritten documents of St. Patrick himself. Which probably ended up getting destroyed by Viking raids. Oh, you divils. You shower divils. Yeah, we'll manually fight it because like I said, it could be our last great battle. Truly, St. Patrick blesses us this day with rain. So that they won't be able to use, the enemy won't be able to use its flaming arrows against us. And we can be guaranteed that our siege engines will reach the wall. We have a large diversionary force over on this side of the map. And then we have the main force heading towards the gates. And there's a substantial army there opposing them. So I don't actually have all that many forces. I suppose there's six units in total once you count the guys that are carrying the, the equipment. We have a lot of horseback units. In Flanchen is Entourage. So we're almost at the walls. I think they're actually sending some people out the main gate. They are indeed. Some javelers. That's it, you devils. Run away. We can't... Um... Okay, sure, you want to go in that direction? No, yeah, sure, no, fine. Yeah, fine, go in that way. And you can come over there. There you go. There you go. Let's be let's be awkward. Let's be awkward. And they did. They've actually gotten forces over here. Uh, I thought they hadn't. They're sending these guys out again. To be mean to me. Not a lot we can do. So I'm just trying to make sure that we crush these spearmen here. Have they brought all their forces back in? They have. They've just finished doing that. They're bringing their king into the battle. While we're here, we just might as well concentrate on uh, taking out those forces. So our diversionary tactic didn't do much. Because all we've diverted, we've diverted one of their X-Men and three of our infantry units. So, it was questionable. 
it definitely diverted something. It definitely diverted something. Uh, we're not seeing any wavering on our behalf, I don't think. And while you're there, see if you can kill a few more of those. If not... Then push out to the next target. Uh, I think are we taking or we were taking the gate. And still they're bringing in more forces. These male Daxmen are doing an all merciful job. Fair play to them. Oh, it looks like a general collapse here. It looks like a general collapse over on that side. Well, these guys have taken... Finally, they've pushed out and taken... Uh, or at least pushed to the wall. But well, it's going to be a long march around. And we are probably going to be losing troops as they, as they get whittled down by defensive measures. Have we lost everything? We haven't. I don't know if we're doing any good in taking this gate. Their general is retreating. That's that's usually not good. Okay, so our our troops have retreated. They've gone out the door. And they're now coming back in. So they retreated out the door and they're now coming back in up the ladder. Okay, fair play to them. That's dedication, I suppose. So what has happened? Their general is still routing. I don't know, is their general even still alive? I don't know, are we taking the gate? We've captured the gates! So their archers... Never mind. I was going to say their archers are, are whittling away at our troops. We're just going to have Flanchina storm into Armagh. We'll have him... We'll have him bully some archers so they dealt a good chunk of damage they dealt a good chunk of damage there I think is their is their king or their uh, their general so we'll bully those archers and I think There's so many, so many of our troops that we can't, we can't make out the one soldier that was left. And we will end what could be the last great battle. Because like I said, from here on in, it's going to be pretty much economic measures. 250 kills for our Axemen. There are eight of them left. So I think that unit is gone. One is reduced to 18, one to 22. That is a pity because... 250 kills. It was a two silver chevron unit. So even though they didn't have the flaming archers, they managed to put up a fairly solid defense at the gates. I think it was those mailed. Fiona, do we do we see them there? Is there anyone there that kind of stands out as being them? Is it the I wonder, is it that unit with uh, 13 left? 29 kills? Like, 498 losses is fairly substantial. And again, we could liberate, but we will occupy. We have some damaged buildings. Let's take a look at those first of all. The Monastery of St. Patrick is at level 4. That's not too shabby. So we can repair. We can repair. We can repair. We can repair. And we can repair. All those buildings needed to be repaired. Now. Right. First things first. My time. Precious, do not waste it. 
offer a peace treaty. We could add other demands. We could make them break their defensive pact with Dublin. Uh, we can't make them become a vassal. We can, but it would be insulting. Give me... Five euros. That's apparently 300 is as low as it goes. Sure, give me 300. Oh yeah, the min is 300. Okay, sure, give me 300. Still excessive, yeah, whatever. I wish there was another way. Now, are we still at war with Dublin? Yes. Initiate diplomacy. Add. Peace treaty. Well, that'll do. Yeah, sure. Okay. It could be worse. Could it? Could it? And so, in the year of the Lord 903, the entire island is not exactly under our complete control, but I would be shocked if there is anybody who would challenge the authority of the High King. I would be shocked if Connacht would view themselves as being superior to the High King. Uh, these lads, they've their offshore holdings, but again, I would be, I would be very, I would be very suspicious if they would challenge the authority of Flanchina based now at Ardvaka, where he gives praise to Saint Patrick as is only just and right. We'll assign a governor. Like I said, where's the Silver Surfer Gunter? He did a mighty job. Fair play to him. Where's he gone? Oh god, we have to retire him. Do we have do we have anyone that, that I can I can just put in there instantaneous No. No. Where's he gone to? War is what we do best, he says. Well He'll be disappointed. We'll replace him. Why, why is he on a different background? If I click here. Okay, so it's just it's just the background. Born Commander. Do you know what? I think it's very fitting that we put an A in control of... Al well, he's not in control, but he's a general in the region. Absolutely, we will accept. And his loyalty is actually very strong. Fair play to him. So we'll accept those changes and our governance in Argilla. We will put... Where has he gone to? No, seriously, where has he gone to? Don't tell me I've, like, just wiped him from the face of the planet. Do I have to wait a turn? Will he Will he appear in a turn's time? Is that how this works? Oh, what a convoluted system. What an unnecessarily convoluted system. I'm going to leave this place without a governor for one turn while Flanchina is here just to uh, to see what's up. I was going to say there's nothing here out of the ordinary. The last sentence or so, it was this famous mission that turned the island to the Christian God and inspired the founding of countless churches there, like the one he established himself in Armagh, Northern Ireland, the modern day location of the old hill fort at Ardvaka. So the use of Northern Ireland in a kind of a historical context by, I think it was a, again, the game is called Thrones of Britannia. We've seen British Isles terminology being used already. We can see they're born to a family in Britain. But the use of Northern Ireland in a historical context is this attempt to push, we won't get into it too much today but it's basically and you do see this you do see this it does happen this attempt to push a modern political division back into history as though I mean there's always been a Northern Ireland 
there's always hundreds of years. Ku Cullen was an Ulster Unionist. He defended Ulster to keep the Irish out. You see these murals in um, in loyalist areas of Ku Cullen. Fighting the Irish. That's the, the terminology they like to use. So that's that's very bizarre, seeing Northern Ireland put in there. Um, he, established, he, like, he established himself in Armagh, Northern Ireland. But he wasn't Northern Ireland at the time. Anyway, look. Somebody should make a series of videos about the represent, uh, representation of Ireland in video games and in science fiction and fantasy. I'm sure it would do great. I'll go on to the next turn to see if we can sort out Arguilla to see if we can put a, a commander in there, to see if we can see how long this is going to take. And then we're fairly close to the end of this episode and we'll see. We will see what the story is from there. What are we, 13 episodes in? I've just completed pretty much my main objective and you can hear the excitement. You can hear the excitement. Wallbreaker Bither. Yeah, there you go. And for the first time in a long time, and a very rare occasion, there is peace on the island. There's a bit of... There's a bit of divilment down over here, is there? No. Has that been sorted out? I think so. One of these regions had fallen to rebels. This region still held by rebels? That's the problem! A Mayo or a Connacht has pushed down and has taken Inish Carthag. Right, we will bring 903, the autumn of 903, to an end, and we will see what the start of next year brings us. Tiernan, somebody is trying to usurp us. I think he took a position or something, or tried to take a position off us, and we said no. It's better to talk, Tiernan. It's better to talk. Flan loses one of the uh, massive heap of influence that he has. Uh, somebody is working against me. Uh. So yes. We did need a turn. We did need a turn to get our general to be able to take up this position here. His loyalty has dropped a small bit. Because we fired him. And now if we actually look at Ordvaka at the monastery, 7,872. So that's gonna... That's gonna take a while. We have 6,200. Is that enough for Hashal? It is. Right, so that, that is the final step towards Hashal. Right. Twelve turns to get Kashal. Eight turns for Ross Alaher. 1,800 per turn, so we're looking at a good chunk of change before we can start making expansions to the Grianon of Alok, before we can start making expansions to Ordvaka. We have one of the five locations complete. We're going to see our... not our stability, but this thing getting our legitimacy, getting whittled down over the next while. Uh, where's objectives? So a short fame victory. We have 320 fame we have the Cathedral of St. Chiron built. Twelve turns until the Castle of the Kings. We need 7,000. So it's going to be a good chunk of change before we can start approaching twelve turns to the Cathedral of St. Patrick. We're eight turns out from the Monastic School of Ross. And it's going to be another chunk of change before we can get the Grianon of Alloc constructed. Comment below what you would like to see. Comment below what you would like to see. Do you want me to see uh, to do another episode where I 
basically try and get all the money together to, to do this. Because that's pretty much all it would be. Uh, we have no... It's Alexander the Great. He's made it as far as Armagh. And he cries because there are no more Enail to conquer. He's done it all. I'm not going after these places. I don't really care. And I don't think they would add a huge amount of money that would allow us to to kind of get the job done faster. The only thing we could do is just go raiding places. We could go to war with somebody and just go raiding. Like poor old Dublin. Just go and bully Dublin. Absolutely just surround Dublin. Somebody down here. Somebody here. And just raid so they can't get out, they can't attack us and just raid the place. We could go raiding against these guys once they've gotten their forces back home. I don't think it's going to add a huge amount of money. But yeah, give a shout. What would you What would you like to see? Would you like to see me continue with another episode to get all that done? If not, I'm going to do it on Twitch. So do go and check the, uh, the Twitch link below in the description. Head on over there this weekend. It might already be gone by the time I get this video out. Is the three-year stream anniversary of the Twitch channel. So if you'd like to wander in for that, I'm not probably going to play the um, getting the achievement, getting the final achievement. I'm not going to do that on Twitch. This weekend, I'm going to wait to see what people would like. Do you want me to do this on, on YouTube? Or do you not really care? Were you just here for the combat? Were you here for the war? And is the idea of waiting ooh, potentially 20-something turns is that just absolutely heartbreaking for us to uh, to watch just to get that achievement. But uh, that's where we are. And so with that out of the way, it gives me a bit of a, a chance to reflect on the entire scenario. I have at times found this profoundly monotonous. I have at times found this profoundly monotonous. I think a fantastic idea, a fantastic opportunity. I don't want to say poorly executed, but you do get the feeling that this was a... It was a test. It was a trial run for some of the, the later Saga games. And look, I mean, I'm playing this episode in the shadow of the release of uh, Total War Pharaoh. I, I don't think we need to talk about that. I remember Rome. I remember Rome. My god, the amount of time that I put into the, that game. I, I still feel that it had a better retinue system. There are generals that I had in that game. I was studying for my leaving cert. We're, we're going back a long time. I, we're talking about the original game. And when I say I was studying for my leaving cert, I wasn't. I was playing Rome. There are generals from that game that I remember. The, the general that led the campaign into France, into Gaul and into Spain. And I kept charging him into battle because I wanted him to die gloriously in battle because he was batshit crazy. That was one of the traits he had. And it reflected in his speeches. Uh, Any man that fights well today will be my sister. It'll be free frocks and jollies forever, you'll see. And everyone would applaud. And I thought, he's crazy. He's deranged. He can't be allowed to control the army anymore, but I want him to die with some level of dignity and respect. You could probably make a a best of this series. There were some of the battles that I really enjoyed, there were some of the decisions that I really enjoyed, there were some of the 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 events that I really enjoyed, but a lot of it was just monotonous. I think and a number of people have complained about this, and myself and some friends. Uh, Vergast404 in particular have been discussing this offline. The amount of time it takes to march from one region to the other is absolutely heartbreaking. Maybe that's the last, the last great thing that Flanchina could do. Right, march him to the Grinon of Alach and see how many turns it would take. Where would we march him to? Ross Alaher? How long, how many years would it take to march to Ross Alaher? I mean, Brian Baru did a circuit of Ireland where 
if I am correct, he left. Uh, bleh, and like up into Meath, up to... I don't know, did he go to Ardvaka and then in this direction? And back down, or was it the other way around? I think he may have... I think it was the other way around. I think he went to like the outskirts. He didn't go to the Green on of Alloc, but he went to around this region. Uh, then to Ordvaka, and then down. I have to verify that. And, um... Like in a single season. A couple of months. Whereas here it would take literally, literal years. So I don't know. Fantastic idea. Came out at a time when there was a tremendous interest in, in Vikings, and I think that was the, the main attraction of this game, was... The, the Vikings and the various argy-bargy going on over in England. When I was trying to get my head around legitimacy, I actually saw some of the very early discussions on legitimacy, and, like, it, it wasn't even fully implemented on release. And I've seen a lot of people comment on the fact that there was there was big DLC planned for this. There was talks about, like, that you could play as Munster, and that you could play as many of the other factions in Ireland. There was going to be other factions uh, added. That never happened. Uh, there was no DLC, I don't believe or expansions or anything like that released for the game. So, like I said, lots of good ideas. Implementation in areas was lacking. The game is quite shallow, and there is a lot of very tedious and monotonous stuff that goes into dragging it out. But there you go. I've gotten the bulk of everything done in case... We don't have a final episode. There you go. There's my there's my analysis of it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, right below in the comments, if you would like to see another episode, if there's questions about this time period, if there's questions about the history, if there's questions about some of the events that have gone on, either historically or in the game, I could do another episode and address those there. I have plans to get back to CK3 and start discussing some aspects of history. And, of course, we have the Fantasy Ireland series, and I have another episode planned for next month relating to Irish history in a video game that isn't any of the medieval Irish ones. And I have some ideas. This isn't the last trip to Thrones of Britannia. After complaining about it there for the last ten minutes, I'm saying we're going to come back to Thrones of Britannia again at some stage. But yeah, there's going to be another trip to Thrones of Britannia later on. But for now, thank you all very much for joining me on this adventure. I enjoyed it now that it's over. But when we were in the, the bogs to the south of Clunord at times, it was uh, it was a bit monotonous and tedious. I'm glad now that it's over and I can say, sure, yeah, I enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for joining me on this journey, on this adventure. And I will see you all on the Hill of Tara for the celebration party.